Hello folks! Today's special video sees me interview another cast member from Ace Lightning, Michael Lamport, the voice of Staff Head. Monsieur Lamport. <laughs> <laughs> Merci. Yeah, Mr. Michael Lamport. <laughs> right. On your bike. On your bike, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that name, it's like, that sounds good, you know, in different accents, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this video, as ever, is a dream come true. I can't contain how exciting an opportunity this was, and a real pleasure and a privilege to talk to Michael about what it was like to work on Ace Lightning, with other members of the voice cast, but also his other work in Voiceland, as well as on stage and beyond. Every chance I have to talk to someone involved in Ace Lightning, I count as a blessing and I relish it so much. It's pretty much my favourite kid show from childhood, lots of memories of it. This video was a blast, as I love all the villain characters in the series, so talking to one of the actors is wonderful. Plus Michael is so personable, and really, 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 really funny. And that always leads to a fun interview. Doesn't matter what it is, even if it's like a bit awkward, but I just find stuff funny. Yeah. We're we're in the same boat. I'm kind of I'm kind of like that. Because you got to have a sense of humor about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you do. So without further ado, let's talk to Michael Lamport today. So hello Michael, how are you? I'm very good, William. Nice to meet you virtually like this. This is good. Mm, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's great to meet you as well. This is like a dream come true. It's like, it's staff head. <laughs> yes. It's the voice. Yeah. Yeah, that that was, uh, I, I've done many different characters uh, as an actor, uh, in, including the Wombles, by the way. Yeah. And, but, uh, but yeah, staff head was so much fun to do. Although I, I should tell you that uh, my friend, uh, Juan Curran, mm -hmm. who played Lord Fear, and my other friend, Tamara Bernier, who uh, played Lady Illusion, when we were sitting with the director, uh, getting introduced to our characters, like because they show it to you on, on paper, and um, Lord Fear looked really scary, and, you know, ah, that's really cool. And then she looked beautiful. And then I realized that I was just like a green pile of crap on top of a stick. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I thought... Oh, well, that, you know, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did they tell you, because uh, uh, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I was going to say that um, I was talking to Matt Fickner, who, of course, designed your character and the CG yes. characters uh, in the show. And I think that um, for one thing with Lord Fear, uh, we'll come to Staff Head, but with Lord Fear, that uh, that scariness of him, like the design of his, yeah, and the, the design of his yeah. head in, in particular. I was his jaw um, and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently that face uh, came to Matt in a nightmare that he'd had long ago, actually. Oh, I didn't know that. No, it was, there, there's a good little interview. I say a little interview, it's about an hour long. Shout out to Joseph Marshall. And yes. uh, it's about an hour long, mostly about Matt's career um, in different things that he has done in kids TV, particularly. But uh, he told that story there. I thought, oh boy, yeah, because uh, he was scary. So it's sort of not surprising that that's the source of that face, you know. Well, it, it, it's not surprising that uh, my friend Juan Curran was picked to play him. Juan is a wonderful, wonderful guy, but uh, I, I've done plays with him as well on stage, and um, he can be scary himself. Oh, boy. <laughs> if he wants to be, you go like, okay, Juan, okay, stop. Yeah, Let's yeah. Let's go have another beer. <laughs> and it's, uh, sorry, how, how do you pronounce his surname? Oh, Juan. Curran. Curran. Juan Curran. Yeah, because I, I, I was checking IMDb, which is where I am, um, you know, having a look at Juan's credits. And I thought, I've lost track of what, you know, some of the voiceover cast from Ace have done, because they've uh, a few of them have been in, you know, various things, you know, not just children's oh, animation. And absolutely. Them, sorry, and some of them are still hard at work uh, now, like Cal Dodd is a good example, where they're doing another season of the X-Men animated series. So yes. We'll get his voice back for Wolverine. That'll be really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Cal, of course, was a random virus uh, in Ace Lightning. <laughs> 
Yeah. But, uh, no, the thing uh, with staff head is that um, they probably, they, they, they might not have told you this. Uh, Matt was saying to me that his character uh, wasn't going to be a character ori originally. He was not going to say anything. He was just going to be like mute because he was like Lord Fear's walking stick, you know, kind right. of. No, I'm really glad that they did uh, create a character for him just because your voiceover was so, so amazing. I just really loved it. Well, it was it was really fun to do because if I recall Staffhead's voice, uh, I, I think he was slightly cockney. I, I, it's sort of like, yes, my lord, what do you want me to do now? Mm. All right. Yeah, well, let's go after them, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of thing. Because yeah. uh, where, where is it you're from originally, Michael? Uh, originally from Southend-on-Sea, mm. at mm. the mouth of the River Thames. And uh, my family and I emigrated to Canada in the 70s. Mm. And I now live in Toronto, and uh, Toronto was where they voiced all of uh, Ace Lightning. That's the, they they used the studio here to do all of it. Mm. Yeah, no, so I was going to say, is Juan um, is he, he he's Canadian, but is he Argentinian born or? Yes, he is, but he's definitely Canadian. But yes, ah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I remember asking him once uh, what his Spanish is like. I may be mis misstating this but i remember saying to him so what's your spanish like and i think he said to me oh michael dear i don't speak spanish at all <laughs> <laughs> i thought nah he's probably lying <laughs> well <laughs> no because um I, i'll need to be careful not 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 to not not to say kieran instead of uh i, I was looking at, at his name his surname yeah. Oh boy, how do you how, how do you say that? Because um, in in Scotland, there's uh, it's a first name, it's a male first name is Keith. Oh right, that's spelt, right. Spelt spelt differently, but it it's just perhaps just because it's me, I just picked up on on that, and I thought, um, right, I'm gonna stumble all over that. Oh, do you know if you just say Kieran, Kieran, it's that one Kieran. Aha, uh -huh. because mm -hmm. I thought, is it? Um, I, I was half, I thought I can kind of grasp that. I thought, is it Quran, like Alfonso Quran? You know, I thought, I, I've got that one. I don't know how I've, got, I've not got the other one. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, yeah, my, my Spanish is not that, not that strong. My French is better and my French isn't good, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, Scotland is closer to France than it is to Spain. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have kind of a relationship like this. I don't know yeah. why, but yeah. Um, well, I, I know why that relationship is like that. It's because, and I'm only joking, it's because the French and the Scottish have always hated the English. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that makes it like that. <laughs> where, it's, where it's sort of like, oh, you're okay, because... Uh, yeah, it's like you're not them, so that's that's fine. <laughs> it's from them. I, I remember last time I was over back home, and uh, I never knew this, but I went up to uh, Hadrian's Wall, and because everybody thinks of the Great Wall of China, and so you grow up in England and anywhere else, I guess, in the world, thinking like, wow, Hadrian's Wall between Scotland and England, it must be massive. And as I recall, it's about like eight inches high, it's tiny, and you can just step over it. Oh, boy. <laughs> so it's not really a wall. <laughs> <laughs> my history, sorry, my, my history in that department isn't so strong. It was probably much more impressive in the past. And then, like... Yeah, when we're kids, it's like, oh, my God, Hadrian's Wall. Oh, my God. And no, no, nah, you, nah, you can just jump over it. It's all right. <laughs> and Hadrian not Adrian, right? And it's like, yes, no, Adrian, you fool. I'm like, okay, fine. It's hard not to say Adrian, but okay. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The H is silent as in yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking of names, there's a good story. Uh, we'll get to the Ace Lightning questions, but uh, with Cal Dodd, uh, who voiced Random Virus, Cal, he's uh, he's Canadian, though, though he's Irish born. And mm -hmm. so uh, his um, Cal is the is the name he ended up going with because uh, his his Gaelic name Irish Gaelic name it's um, it's spelt Cathal C A T H A L but uh, you you don't pronounce the T so it's uh, it's pronounced Cahal and it's uh, Gaelic for Charles actually I'm like okay I could sort of see that but uh, upon yeah 
But upon moving, it, in some places, like on Wikipedia, he's, I think he is called Cathal Dodd, but uh, he, he was in an interview and he, the guy was saying, so Cathal, how are you? He's like, I'm going <laughs> to stop you right there because you said Cathal. He's like, but I, I, I didn't even go by that name. <laughs> But he he was quite a young boy. He was at school in in Port Dover, Ontario, and the kids couldn't oh. pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, and the kids couldn't quite get it. And so he goes home one day. He's like, "Mom, Dad, we have to do something about this name because they're they're calling me bovine. They're calling me cattle." He's like, <laughs> "They're calling me cattle, and that's gonna you know that's gonna turn to cow. So let's let's fix that." <laughs> I, I didn't know that he went to school in Port Dover. I know Port Dover very, very well. Mm, I think he's from there. I think oh. uh, when when the family moved, uh, emigrated from Dublin in, in the Republic of Ireland to uh, mm -hmm. to Ontario. So no, I think that's home for Cal. But uh, he's he, I think he's still named, still is called Cahill, like at special occasions or something. But it's just the family. So he's like, yeah, we yeah. got rid of Cahill and now it's just Cal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um I have friends that have Gaelic names and I can I can relate to that, but I'd like to think it's a bit more inclusive now and people aren't like, oh, I'm gonna have to change my name because it's yeah, you know, it's like difficult to pronounce, you know. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think people should just get over it and, and and people should learn to pronounce other people's names. I mean that what's what what's wrong with that? And and if you get it wrong, you can get corrected. And if you get it wrong, you're not doing it in a negative way. You're just saying this is what I this is how I would pronounce it. In it, what what is it in Wales? Because I've never been able to say it. The longest train station in the world, Landfair, Gilliamita, a little 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 gollywogwogwog. It's like, but I know people that can pronounce it perfectly, and I'm like, holy shit, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh dear. Mm. But uh, with uh, with my my own name, because Hayward, I've found uh, is is an English second name, and my, yes. my family uh, going back are more English than Scottish, you know. But uh, no, Scotland is home is home for me. That that's great. I I think it's lovely. Mm. Oh gee, but uh, no, you're 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 a great surname, Michael uh, La Lamport. I thought uh, not not lamp post, no. No. <laughs> Although in school I got called Lampos. Oh boy. <laughs> but of course you do, right? It's like, come on, Lampos. Where it's like, ha ha, you your name's whatever. It's like, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> but it never ever bothered me. I was never like upset or cried about it. I was just like, that's what people do. Yeah. You know, and I and I probably called friends of mine silly aspects of their names too. But we, we all do it. Uh -huh. As kids and as adults, like, mm. Mm, yeah, but uh, no, we're thinking thinking about um, your your surname. It does, uh, but also the voiceover for Staff Head. How in, indeed he did have sort of that Cockney accent. I think to kind of put him just a cut below Lord Fear. So it's like he's sophisticated, yeah. but um, he's very much like adjacent to this guy and very servile uh -huh. because. He would do whatever Lord Fear wanted him to do. Mm. Like he wouldn't challenge Lord Fear because he was terrified of him, but he would never challenge him. You know, sort of be like, "Yeah, Lord, well, you want me to do what? Yeah, all right. What? Well, I'll go out there and do that right away, then, sir. Mm. Yes, my lord. Mm -hmm. You know, and th that's what he was. He was his um, sort of basic do all servant. I think mm -hmm. he was also his best his best friend, but as well. But there are moments definitely like that. Yeah. Yes. Where Although it, if you think you can, I, I think with the characters having a, maybe from Staffhead's point of view, having a best friend as like Lord Fear, uh, if it were real life, I would be very hesitant to have Lord Fear as my best friend. Because <laughs> I think Lord Fear could turn on you in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Where um, it's about halfway through the series of, se of season one, anyway, and Lord Lord Fear gets his rear end blasted. Ah. And uh, and stuff is just like not a very dignified exit, if you know what I mean, my lord. Shut up. Not a very dignified exit, if you know what I mean, my lord. Shut up. <laughs> 
That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, that that one that one stuck in my in my mind. That one, yeah. Another one, Michael, because um, uh, I'm I'm 26. So uh, Ace Ace Lightning doing the maths when it came out in 2002, I, I would have been five, and mm -hmm. it, was, it was my thing when I was younger. I wasn't like the only uh, the only person that watched it. Like my best friend did, most likely because I subjected him to it. But uh, <laughs> you know, because I, I had the VHS tape of the first few episodes and like would watch that but there's a line that Staffhead has that I would quote when you're a child yeah. you don't really get it but it's like <clears throat> it's like never ask Lord Fear for anything without saying please do oh, I remember that line <laughs> never ever ask Lord Fear anything without saying please yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> Never ask Lord Fear for anything without saying please. So in a way, Staffhead was uh he, he was almost like his go-between as well. Like like his he was his friend, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This green thing on top of a stick was his friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lord Fear doesn't have any friends except me. His character kind of got redesigned slightly in the second season because yes. In season one, he looked uh, he looked like a bat, like a green, more so like a green bat with wings. Exactly. He was a frog, but you didn't really pick up on that until the yeah. second season because they made him made him look a bit bigger and more like a frog and just a yes. bit more. Um, I, I I don't want to say he looked better because I've got this kind of I like it both ways, you know. Well, we I mean, yeah, as he changed, but you know, in life we all change. <laughs> you know, so I guess Staff had just morphed a little bit and became more like a frog. Yeah. It was it's still weird, still weird cat, but really well done. Oh, the, the animation in Ace Landing, I, I, I think, was fascinating. When I watched it, I was, I personally, even though, you know, doing the voiceover and everything, I was blown away by the animation. I was like, holy God, this is really good. It was like state of the art at the time. Now, I know these days, with the more involvement of computers and everything like that, uh, they can do stuff even better. But I, I, I think that the episodes are really good. I, I think the mix between um, the real life and the uh, animation was, I don't know, to me, it was pretty seamless. It was, uh, you know, you, you didn't know that that real actor, that real person was there, but the creatures weren't because they were added afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 I think they did a really good job. I really do. Yeah, completely. No, because uh, uh, in rewatching the show uh, for the review that I'm working on at the moment, um, you know, the, like the integration's really good, like reflections and stuff, you know, on surfaces. Yeah. Like to yeah. make it, to sell it that it's, it's really in that that space you know i completely agree because i know that i i did wonder um and we'll talk about the the process uh, mm -hmm. like the voicing over but i wondered like what it would have been like filming those sequences with the cgi character because um i think i used to wonder if the uh, if the voice cast would have actually been there and you know did their lines you know to try no oh no i know i know how it worked now but because i know matt fickner stood in as the majority of the characters and performed for the characters and spun the lines and and stuff like that and i thought it's it's certainly just simpler to do it that way to have this one man band kind of thing yes you know rather, yeah. rather than try and have lots of people do it absolutely and, and that would help that obviously helped the animators because when we were recording uh we were lucky enough because it doesn't often happen in voice is that we recorded ensemble mm. for example juan myself tamara and others we'd be in the same room just with you know different microphones so we we would actually look at each other and so long as we the technical aspect of it as long as we remembered not to jump on each other's lines because that screws up the animators um, you know, you, you give it a second before you respond. And uh, it was really dynamic to do it that way. Because you, the as an actor, you, you fed off of other actors' intentions and all that sort of stuff. And so that was a lot of fun. And, and that was a really nice way to do it. And uh, I hadn't done voiceover like that almost at all. Because usually you're just in your own little booth and you just got to read your lines, blah, blah, blah. But it, it was so much fun to do it ensemble. Mm. 
Because I know with some um, animated shows that are like 2D or 3D or even, yeah. you know, like a mixture of the two, which is what Ace Lightning is, you know, known for. Sometimes you record individually or, or you do record as a cast. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I'm glad you mentioned that it was, you know, an ensemble because uh, it, it felt that way. You know, it felt like, you know, we're talking to one another and it's not just like stitched together from different, different bits. Yeah. Because I think what they've learned in some shows, they, they've tried doing it individually and they think, oh no, this isn't going to work. Just partly the way it's scripted and partly just, it, you know, you, you have to you have to react off something, off somebody. So you I, I, I agree with you entirely, with him because if you do it individually, which I've done uh, with voiceovers as a line, it's okay. And then the editor just has to stitch it all together. When you are doing it, and you're looking into the, this sounds so corny, when you're looking into the eyes of the other actor, you know, like when, when I looked into Juan's eyes or something, who's basically th three feet away from me at the other mic, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, yes, Lord Fear. Uh, I I'm sorry. I and and Juan as an actor, because I've done stage with him, as I said before, like he would look at me as I'm doing the lines and he would be like, <laughs> like he, he would be Lord Fear. Mm -hmm. And that and that was so much fun because it makes you go like, ooh. <laughs> He did have lots of moments like that in in in, in, in animation because his head would extend and his arms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come to Papa. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great that you know that 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 was part of like physicalizing the character, you know. But um, could I ask um, just about it's? I, I guess we, we've sort of answered the question, or we've gone for it. But Michael, uh, what was your experience like working on on Ace Lightning? Because I think you you had lots of scenes with with Lady Illusion and with um, yes. Beer. But what was it like? Uh, my my overall experience was really positive. Uh, like the recording studio people were fantastic. The uh, sound recorders were amazing scripts always came out on time i i don't recall a negative I, I don't recall a negative situation or even a like a wonky situation i i just recall it as being a really really positive and fun experience it was like going to the sessions it would be something i would be looking forward to i would oh. really in enjoy going to them mm. No, that's amazing. That's great to hear. Because uh, sorry, I've got my my notes just here, but because oh. uh, uh, no, you voiced one of my favorite characters, you know, in 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 the show. Just the just the performance that that you gave, and you know, like staff head, like his role in the in the show. Because um, you know, from what I said, because he was conceived as just being this this walking cane. It's great that he was given you know, a more substantial role because of all these these things that I just remember him doing, you know, like trying to play Lord Fear and Lady Illusion against one another. Oh, and yes, I remember that. <laughs> that's a good one. Blast her, sir. Let her have it. Perhaps you can be forgiven, my lady. Yeah, or it's like, you know, I might tell, but then again, I might not. For now, <laughs> be our little secret. I might tell. Again, I might not. <laughs> For now, it'll be our little secret. <laughs> yeah, he, he he was a yeah he, he was a little bit of a bastard, wasn't he? <laughs> he was, he was, yeah. He was very smug, and I think this is this this is the thing. It's just these personality types. It's why I do love all the villains in Ace Lightning. Sometimes I wonder, do I actually like them better than the heroes? But uh, <laughs> and of, of course, you're you're not supposed to see them that way. But then again, uh, they are fun, you know. It, it, it's true though, because I I think in many things we watch, we 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 can all be more on the side of the villain yeah. because they're more intriguing and interesting you know it, it, it's like in 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 harry potter you yeah. know you dare not speak his name but god you love him yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and you love harry potter too but oh i don't know i think that bad guy is pretty cool yeah he well, doesn't have a nose <laughs> yeah well yeah that that was a detail from the book and it's great that talking of cgi that they were able to do that with ray fines with his face i know and make it look that way and you know because 
I, I do love those books, but then like in, uh, you know, I saw more of the movies first before reading them. And it's a good job I read the last book before seeing the last two movies because I can remember, I remember leaving the cinema and someone, somebody just saying, I didn't get it. And I thought you really needed to read the book. Yeah. Well, you, you want to make a film for people that aren't familiar with the book, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, you really leaned hard on this notion, this hope that people have done. I, I, I agree with you. And I believe that in cases like that, I think it's important that people read the book mm -hmm. and don't just do one or the other, you know, and, and yeah. Well, I think, um, I think with that one, it's like a lot of like the Marvel movies now, which is a different kind of thing. But um, I think they thought to themselves, well, maybe we could sell more books, more copies of this story oh. by making movies or making a show or... Absolutely. Know, else. Yeah. Like, 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 like in that regard, and I know this has nothing to do with Ace Lightning, just recently, like yesterday, I watched the new, uh, the new Barbie movie. Uh -huh. And I loved it. Me but too. what's, what's going to happen mm -hmm. is that Mattel is actually going to, I believe, we, we should all invest in Mattel stocks right now because I think sales of all of their dolls, not just Barbie, but Skippy and Ken, and there's going to be a pregnant Barbie. There's going to be a normal Barbie. There's going to be the regular Barbie. They're going to make a fortune. Yeah, yeah, well... I, I did enjoy that that movie a lot. It was really really funny, and but at the same at the to the point where I actually felt I thought did did you not miss your target demographic though? I thought you've gone for gone you've gone for like early teens and up. I thought Barbie's for like young children. So this movie when I That's saw right. it, the the adults were laughing. I didn't hear the kids laughing, and I thought um, hopefully you know I'm not saying that it wasn't a good film. It was really really great, but I thought. Uh, just the artifact of trying to make it appeal to all these, you know, generations. Well, the artifact, I think, of making it appeal to those people, perhaps in Mattel's marketing mind, is sort of like uh, the kids are not the ones that are going to be buying our dolls. No. So if we get the adults and they can buy the pregnant Barbie or the regular Barbie and then give it to their kids and <laughs> say, look, this is blah, 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 you know, I mean, their marketing strategy, I think, is probably like who's paying the bill and it isn't going to be a 12 year old. No, that's that's it. Yeah. It's like um, with, you know, brands that have gone on for so long, like Power Rangers is another one where and that that one, this goes back to the show, you know, in Japan, that Power Rangers uses footage from and, you know, the toys that were yes. made over there and brought over. I think we'll come up with a series of concepts that we can put into our show to make into action figures and then write the story, you know, on that for one. But also, but also like with the legacy toys that they do now, parents aren't going to buy children figures like that, but it's, it's for like the fans that know this and love this everlasting property. Yes, I completely agree with you. Oh, yeah. boy. I want to say quick, we'll get to Ace Lightning again, but talking of sympathetic villains, um, a lot of people didn't like the movie, but uh, the most recent Thor film, Thor Love and Thunder with Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher, great, great name. Oh, gods will die. I kind of, I was watching it and I thought to myself, I'm kind of just rooting for Gore just to go around murdering everybody. I'm, I'm, a, I'm on his side. I'm fine with this. <laughs> you know, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting. <sighs> well, ha have you interviewed Juan yet? Uh, no, I, I would love to. You know, I, I tried to find um, a few people, actually. But uh, if, um, you know, if, if Juan would be willing to, and if that's a possibility, I would really love to. Well, I, I, I can send you his email information and and do like an introduction. Uh, lovely, sure. No, I could, I would really appreciate that because uh, I know with um, with just about every character in the show, I've good stories that I could tell about them, about their character to you know to the actor. So um, we'll, we'll see how that pans out because I, I, I would hate to try and um, you know try and coax any anyone if 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 they no. would prefer not to. That's absolutely cool. But no, I would really love to in case. It's a really fun interview. Oh, lovely. Cheers, man. We've got um, two questions there. Does Tamara? Does she act as much and any longer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was uh, in Toronto, New York, and Los Angeles. She was a star of Mamma Mia. Oh, was she? Yeah, 
and then she uh, and then she took up. Uh, she's in charge of a school in Toronto for actors. Now she doesn't do too much because she's like she's got kids and she's just like yeah acting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, she's very very uh, very much involved woman. Uh, I just had a thought, you know, um, we'll get like a like a T-shirt made that's got the comedy tragedy, you know, mask on it. And also with the te- with the words underneath, it's exhausting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So what career field did you just get out of acting? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got something special uh, special to show you, Michael. So this uh, this isn't my own personal copy. It's one I've found uh, my own copies elsewhere. But this is the Ace Lightning Guidebook from two thousand two uh, three, I think. Oh my God! Yeah, the, these things. Quite a lot of merchandise cropped up, you know, at the time. Like there's this, and then like a yearbook from the year two thousand three. Also, like various DVDs and stuff uh, for the for the first season. The second season, I think, didn't receive like a home media release because of I believe insufficient revenue from stuff like this. But also mm-hmm. the video game that was produced based on the show. I think the amount of money spent making the game very much leveraged the economics of the show, according to Rick Sigelko, the, the executive producer. So, you know, the BBC were just like, we're sorry, we can't sustain the production anymore, you know, beyond it's... season two. Wow. Mm, man. Yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll show you something specific for you. I'll tell you what, I'll see if I can send you a copy of this or some, you know, some or some other stuff if you want. Yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah. But uh, we've got uh, we've got a bit here about Lord Fear and Staff Head. Here we go. We'll turn this over. There you go. There you are. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I'll see if I can find it, but they did this really bizarre um, digital edit on Lord Fear's hat to try and squash it like into place. It's on the VHS tape that I have, but uh, I'll take. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yeah, here, here we go. So we got Lord Fear at the top, and I'm like, what's happening to his hat? Like as a kid, I'm like, what is what is the point of that? Yeah. Mm. It's to squeeze him into the page there with the rest of the the bad guys, but it's it's a strange little edit. It is strange, but hey, it's Ace Lightning. Everything's strange. Yeah, that's what we love about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, the funny thing is, uh, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, oh yes, here we are. So this is a little character bio about Staff Head. What I'll do is I can try and superimpose the cover later on in the uh, or the image for you to see. But uh, so we've got some strengths and weaknesses, and you know some preferences on. Uh, on staff head's part but one of them this is my favorite he says if there's one thing that does annoy me it's being used to block lightning bolts i mean i would do anything to protect my lord and master but they do give me a bit of a headache (laughs) oh dear so uh likes blasting ace lightning and helping lord fear dislikes being used as a shield no kidding Oh gee, it is funny. Oh yeah, no, it's this is yeah one of my one of my favorites there. Hmm. That's very cute. Yeah. Oh gee, I don't think we ever got those over here in Canada. No, I was asking Matt Fickner about the merchandise, whether it was sold, because uh, I th- I believe they sold uh, some of it in Europe in different languages, like in Germany, yeah. in Germany and Greece and. Uh, I'm trying to think where else. Uh, you can find some of the dubs on the internet, like in Russian and uh, Portuguese. I'd love to know what staff has voices like in Russian. It was a strange dub because the English audio was still there and they put the Russian on top. Of course. Избавь нас от дурацких вопросов. Жди, пока лорд страх к тебе обратится. I, I, I wonder, I wonder if in the if in the German version, I wonder if Starhead would have said stuff like, "Yeah, mein Führer." Yeah. I've, uh, 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 
<laughs> or, you know, whatever to Lord Fear. Führer, Führer sounds like fear. Oh, ah, yeah. Lord Führer. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's. <laughs> and can't. Du hast Lord Fear nur anzusprechen, wenn du dazu aufgefordert wirst. Verstanden? Yeah, yeah. Some of the characters, uh, I'll tell you what, I've got, I've actually, here's a funny story. I've got some German videotapes of it down here. I'll pull those out. I'll get that right now. But uh, in designing the characters, I believe that uh, they, they were going to have titles, actually. They were going to all be called Lord and Lady. Yeah. But possibly not Staffhead, because as I say, he didn't, he, he wasn't a character yet. He was, he was what he was, but... Uh, and also Staffhead was just a common, like, the common man, as it were. Like, he yeah. couldn't be a Lord or a Lady. He's just Staffhead. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You can play the serpent position. Yeah. Trust in me, your lordship. With uh, with Googler, he he was. I mean, being still being the court jester because it has that like medieval. It does, doesn't style. it? Style, yeah. When when I was reading the scripts and doing it, I did think it's so funny you say that because I did think of him as like the court jester. I know he was on the end of the stick, but. I always thought because the Lord was so powerful that he was the the court jester because he he often said stuff that was really inappropriate and he could say stuff to Lord Fear that other people would never dare say. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was a close call, my lord. I thought you was a goner. Oh, shut up, you naughty piece of timber! And I I never I I used to think that he was like the court jester. Mm -hmm. But uh, with uh, I've got I've got the tapes. But with um, with the characters, uh, Anvil was uh, Lord Brutal. Actually, was his working name. And uh, you know, going very much for adjectives for the character before coming up with ah. actual name. And Pigface. This is probably my favourite one. Uh, was Lord Vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> And Googler, yeah, Googler um, was, this is on Matt Fickner's, uh, uh, in his concept art, uh, was Lord Chaos. <laughs> I'm like, perfect. <laughs> it is. It, especially these days, when you think of anything with the name Google or Twitter or anything like that, yeah, yeah Chaos. Chaos is good. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll, I'll need to ask Matt about about that name, about Googler at least, because I don't know if the Google search engine influenced that name or, or uh, you know, what the story is. But uh, no, it's a funny name. It's a cool name one way or the next. It is. Yeah, it is. But it, it's also a very English expression. I mean, you know, you've got Google eyes or you've got, uh -huh. you, you've gone googly over her or him or yeah you, everything's just really googly you ask and googler goes googly <laughs> yeah it's it's a great name mm. so i think google google stole the name from the uh, the original use of the word google oh, oh, oh. well i know with the uh, uh, with the maquettes that matt fickner sculpted of the characters uh, googler's eyes like he had his glove puppets just sort of up like this and his eyes were kind of go like rolling around in his head and like they sort of don't do that in the show there, there's one animation moment where they do that i'm like oh that's fun let's googlerize lightning <laughs> But yeah, that since you mentioned that, yeah, I think that was probably in probably part of it, yeah. But uh, but uh, here we go. I've got the tapes just here. So this uh, these are still in the shrink wrap from twenty years ago, and I probably will never open them. Oh my god! We will see. I don't know. So that's one of the German tapes. <laughs> I'm trying to see. We've got Ace and uh, Lord Fear actually on the front. Yeah, the DVD of the first seven episodes has that image still where it's like the two of them, but it's like a different background. Yeah. And uh, let's have a look. Uh, here's one. Uh, here's one with Lady Illusion. Here we are. Oh, wow. Do you want me to bring it closer? How's that? No, no, that's good. And And, and these are in German? These are, yeah. I have, um, I've, I'm really nerdy and I've collected these. I've got DVD equivalents of these, but yeah, these are, these are German tapes. 
Anvil and Ace. <laughs> I didn't realize that it had such a following in Germany. Um, yeah, it's. I, I know it's it sold to. Um, I think um, like a hundred different countries, like first time around. But like, um, I think the big one would have actually been um, like Malaysia and like Indonesia and Hong Kong and stuff. Because the the main the twenty six episode DVD which I've got got in the corner. I'll, I'll pull that one out if if you want. Hi there. I'm sorry, I forgot to show the 26 episode DVD set from Hong Kong, no less. There we go. But uh, yeah, it's it's weird because it was it it seemed to have been like the most popular thing, you know, for a while, and then it it sort of it it sort of faded af after season one, maybe because season two didn't have a DVD or anything. Hmm. Well, I mean, I I think that's great for the producers of it. Good for them that they, they managed to sell it around the world. That's great. Because mm -hmm. as a producer myself of other shows, once you sell stuff around the world, I mean, not only do you get more money, <laughs> but it, it's just great exposure. And uh, that's good. I didn't know any of that. Because it was a UK-Canada co-pro, I always thought that it... How naive am I? I always thought that it was sort of really UK and... Canadian broadcasters. I didn't realize that they'd sold it around the world. Mm. No, and that's fantastic. Yeah, no, it really is. It's it just goes to show because like occasionally there's like YouTube comments on you know videos of it from the past where they'll say, "Oh, I remember this show. I remember watching it in Australia," or because that's <laughs> where the people was the people were from. And um, it, I, I don't really understand this broadcasting term. You you might be able to help me here. In the United States, it, it was shown in syndication, and I think yeah. as a result, it it did okay at that time. You know, it didn't do as well as it could have done in North America because I know in Canada it did. Play Play, but once on the telly and then um i think just competition from other networks like the disney channel and nickelodeon yes. just for example you know early 2000s just th those broadcasters just you know just sucked in all, all the viewers so i think showing it that way wasn't the best wasn't the best way but how does syndication work do you know um the the, the way that i understand syndication working is that you have a show and that different broadcasters will buy the show and then they will air it individually. But the thing is that a lot of broadcasters say, uh, I don't want syndication. I want this show on our network. And so the audience would come to us to see the show, not that they can go and see it in five other networks. That's what I think it is. But again, I could be wrong. No, that's more, that's much more than I know. <laughs> and so, you know, I suppose uh, going back to Google, I could have checked this out, but no, it, it's nice talking, you know, to you because uh, where it's like, uh, Michael, he's a producer, like this, this is amazing. We've got to see what, see what we could learn. Well, yeah. I, I, I should start a company called Staff Head Productions. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the funny thing is because Ace Lightning, I don't know if you saw on on uh, the script, but it was originally going to be Captain Lightning talking of uh, like. Yes, Rocket. I did see that. And it was uh, in the credits. It's got uh, Captain L Productions, actually. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember seeing that Captain Lightning. And I don't know. Do you know why they changed it to Ace Lightning? Um, I don't exactly know because um, it, it went through a few different iterations. It was going to be Captain Lightning because that was that was Ace's uh, name, like Captain America. Even, it, yeah. even though in writing the show, the Marvel and the DC characters uh, were influential. Like one of the writers, Alan Grant, I believe, wrote for the Justice League comics. Wow. Um, yeah, I know. And Mark Loren Young, who I've had the pleasure of speaking to actually as well, uh, wrote a few episodes of the show, who's done, um, he had a pitch for Batman quite a while ago, which didn't get picked up, but... Batman. No, Mark has dipped his toe in a lot of different stuff, but uh, I don't really know why they, they changed it, because it was Captain Lightning 
then it became Ace Lightning and the Carnival of Doom. That was the actual yeah. show title, which is still what the video game in the universe of the show is called. Ace Lightning and the Carnival of Doom. <laughs> Sweet game. But then it was just shortened to Ace Lightning. So possibly because they came up with a, a wordy title and they just they just truncated it, and that's how. So I don't really know. But they 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 should have called it Staff Head Lightning. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like He Man. It's like the He Man cartoon, which is yeah. the influence for Lord Fear and Staff Head Vision. Yes, because because Skele Skeletor had that that staff with like a ram. Yeah, that's head. right. That's right. And I saw that. Like there it is. That must be. And which contributes to why he wasn't going to be a character. It was just going to be a thing. But I, I think it works better that way because they elevated it from just that inanimate prop. I never thought of it like that. You're right. No, me neither until, because re-watching the show, you know, I thought I might throw in some of Skeletor's lines in place of Lord Fear, like, back off, muscle boy. Back up, muscle boy. <laughs> Get out of back. my sight. Get out of my sight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, with, I mean, with He-Man, um, he's great, but I prefer Skeletor. Like, he's a much more interesting character. <laughs> oh dear, because he was he was the anarchist, and he never got his way. And you sort of, you know, I'm like, I'm just rooting for him to just ruin everything. Just, just let's go, let's go. <laughs> See, that that goes back to what you said before about how we all love to sort of root for the bad guy. Mm -hmm. like, we don't want the bad guy. We don't want to be the bad guy. We don't really want the bad guy to kill anybody. But God, that bad guy, he's the underdog. Give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, and, I, and I think we all have a tendency to do that. It's like one of my favorite movies in the world, Alien, the first one, and uh, Sigourney Weaver's character and all the people on the craft. I mean, it's terrible what happened to them because they all died except her. But part of me watching it was always going, okay, alien, I don't know what your name is, but this is what you got to do because this is what you do. So just keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's funny how we can so easily root for the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I want to I want to read the back of the, the German VHS tape just to see if I can, because that might be funny. But uh, Mike, wow. um, ha have you kept in touch, uh, not in touch with uh, Matt Fickner, but um, uh, have you kept up with what he's up to now? No, I have not, sadly. No, it's cool. No, I just asked because uh, his whole craft is puppetry. And um, we'll talk about because he was, of course, the voice of Zip and Snip, who were uh, Googler's sock puppets in the in the show. But um, no, he's uh, he's done a few different things, but uh, he's got this show, uh, Fernsby's Cryptid Critter Control. Great name. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's it's sort of a mixture of of Ghostbusters and Inspector Gadget, where it's um, these these guys they exterminate mythic creatures and stuff. <laughs> it, it's his kind of creativity, and by that token, it's it's mine too. That's cool. Uh, there there is a trailer. I can throw you the link to that. It's uh, cool. it's on his social media as well. And yeah, I'm eagerly anticipating that because it's it's nice for him to get like a, a new uh, puppet show to do. Yeah, no, I agree. He, he's brilliant. He's he's a great uh, puppeteer, if that's the correct expression. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I think um, it's it's very much his own style because I know he's interested, you know, he took some influence from like Jim Henson, you know, for some of the character designs, but it's it's really just him going off doing his own thing. But, uh, oh yeah, because um, prior to Ace Lightning, he was working on uh, Naughty, actually, the, um, you know, a show based on the Enid Blyton books, of course. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think there was a show that the BBC had done already and they, to like bring it over to North America, America, they like did a new show in this uh, antique shop where they had lots of characters, some of which were designed and operated by Matt, and then others were like a group of other people. So you can see shades of how that show influenced what he's up to now. I I wish that we had, and there must be somewhere, but I don't know where they are. I wish we had some of the outtakes or blooper reels of Ace Lightning. Mm -hmm. Because I do remember Juan and I 
and Tamara sometimes, like just going on about stuff that we shouldn't be saying. And the record, the 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 uh, editor was just saying, just keep going, you know. So there's got to be a bunch of outtakes that probably knowing Juan would probably be so inappropriate. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. and yet probably quite funny in yeah, retrospect. Yeah. Oh, gee. No, it's um, it's it's interesting because uh, going uh, talking about uh, Juan, that voice that he was able to do because he made oh. it sound you know, like, like, like an Englishman. And I kind of wondered because um, there, there's this in the show anyway, there's Mark Hollander played by Tom Wansey, the, the main, the main kid. He was saying that um, he's playing the British version of Ace Lightning. It's all part of the Ace Lightning game, the British version. Oh. Uh, which is shorthand for the the version that came to life. But shush, I'm trying not to, to let these characters run amok more so than normal. <laughs> but I wondered, uh, Michael, that because um, because of that voice that Lord Fear has, and because of your own, you know, it, they they sound very English. And I I wondered in my head, I thought, is there like a version of the game where all the characters sound American or you know Canadian, or no. and all of them no. sound British? I'm like that. I mean, in my imagination as a kid, I'm like that. That would be funny, like American yeah. half head. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Uh... I, as a voice actor, I never did a version of Staffhead. He was always talking like this. He never talked like this. You know, my Lord, like, what do you want to do? No. He, he was like a gangster type. And Juan's voice, he has such an amazing ability to change his voice and do different accents. And uh, when he took on the his decided accent for for Lord Fear, it was fantastic. Mm. And uh, and I and I and I've seen him in so been with him in many other shows where like in the uh, the pantomime Cinderella that I was in with him, he was one of the dames. Oh, so he had a voice like oh, oh no. he was hilarious. And then. You go watch him in Stratford play something like Macbeth, and it's just like holy shit! Mm -hmm. This is terrifying. I, he he's such a good actor. It's like uh, like going back to the superhero genre, like like Willem Dafoe in the in the Spider Man Ooh. movies. You know, more so in the most recent Spider Man, where he's able to play this Jekyll and Hyde type, where one is you know kind of timid and unsure of himself than the other is, is completely insane, basically. Sometimes I'm not myself. I'm someone else. Gods don't have to choose. We take. You know. I, I, I agree with you entirely. Mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated by actors that do that, as opposed to the big time actors like the Tom Cruises of the world, I know they're acting, but they're also personalities. Mm -hmm. Whereas you've got people like Defoe or uh, Sir Ian McClellan. Yeah. And these are real actors. They, they, these are people that can in, embody different personalities. Mm. They fascinate me so much more than the big, the, the, the big screen names. Mm. Now, McKellen's another one that's done a lot of a lot of plays, a lot of Shakespeare, and then a lot of pantomimes as well. He and uh, Sylvester McCoy, who ended up in the Hobbit movies together, they yes. it was cool seeing you know hearing their stories because it's like oh no we we met before we knew one another when we did Shakespeare. This is great. A a absolutely, and one of the one of the fascinating stories I, I hope it's true about Sir Ian McKellen is that when. Uh, he was in New Zealand filming that wonderful series of movies. He had previously promised a producer in Vancouver in Canada here that he would come back, or, or no, that he would do a play for them. It was a two-week play. And uh, he said to the producers of the movie, I have to leave now for about four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. And he flew to Canada to be in the play which he was getting paid $200 a week for <laughs> compared to probably $200,000 a week in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And he did the play and he donated uh, the money to charity, but he lived up to his honor. And he said, yeah, I, I promised these guys I'd do this play. And he did the play. And it's stuff like that amazes me about some people. 
I, I just love that sort of thing. I no, wish we could be generous. Yeah. Yeah. No, his sense of commitment to, you know, to the roles he was doing, like going, I mean, going between uh, the US and New Zealand, like um, with Lord of the Rings, like playing Gandalf, but also going, hopping on a plane to go and play Magneto, you know, as well. Two very different characters, but also just like doing them at the same time. And yeah. Yeah. Well, that that that's what an actor does. They act, <laughs> and 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 he he seems to be. I've never met him. I'd love to meet him. He just seems to be a real. Whenever I see him interviewed, he seems to be a really gentle soul, mm -hmm. a, and a really nice soul. Yeah. No, he really. No, he really is. I need, I need to I need to see more of what of what he's done. There's a great little story when um, behind the scenes making the first Hobbit, uh, Philippa Boyens, who's one of the screenwriters for all of those movies, she hadn't seen it before, but she'd seen I think footage from long ago of Ian doing Shakespeare uh, as this vibrant young man, and she was like, I saw him, and he was so handsome. Not that he's not handsome now, but you know, <laughs> just seeing him in the in the thing. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. But no, I had to, I, I was going to list off some names uh, of what it was like working with particular you know particular okay. actors, but um, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so no, what was it like? We've talked a lot about Juan Curran, but uh, what was it like working with Ted Atherton, who played Kilobytes in season two? Uh, it it was fine. Uh -huh. We we all we all got along. Um, Ted and I, like, sort of, obviously we had an acquaintance. It, it wasn't over the top. Uh, it wasn't like my friendship with Juan or Tamara or anything, but it was okay. That There was never, uh, I, I don't recall, not just with Ted, but I don't recall any tension with any of the other actors that I worked with. None. Mm -hmm. we, we, we didn't get up each other's noses or anything like that we 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 all got along oh sure no 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 that it was more i guess the question really was because you know mo most of the cast worked together you know for the longest time on the show but then there were others like robert tinkler who voiced rot gut as well as mm -hmm. one. howdy partners name's rot and I've seen Robert in interviews. He seems really nice. I wouldn't mind, you know, I'll try, you know, see if I could reach out. But do you remember working with Robert or not Not too much? Not too much. No. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. Because he wasn't in the show very much, to be fair. Yeah, someone that's difficult to uh, reach out to is Michael Riley, who voiced who voiced Ace. Yes, yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know Michael well. Um, I have friends that have worked with him on stage. Uh, I think he's a little bit reclusive. Yeah. But I don't know if I should say that, but I, I, I think he is. He doesn't, he sort of shuns the spotlight a bit. There's, uh, I, I meant to say before, there's a, a little video I think I'd seen of you, Michael. Um, it was uh, something I wondered about bringing up, but uh, Robin Williams, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, does that happen sometimes? Like, do, do people, d did people think that you look like him in the past? Or do you still... Uh, it, it it used to happen uh, two to three times daily. Oh. And uh, my answer, uh, people would say to me, like in a grocery store or, you know, walking down the street, oh, uh, excuse me, you know who you look like? And I know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, I know. Everybody thinks I look like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> it's so weird. And... They would laugh, but what's interesting is that the black people that stopped me to ask me that, they laughed the hardest because they were just like, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. And now it has happened recently. And now, sadly, uh, because of that great actor's demise, yeah, my response now it is a bit rude, I think, because they say, like, you know who you look like? Yeah. Uh, and, they, and they say, you look just like Robin Williams. And then I touch my face and go, uh, are my bones showing already? Oh, boy. I haven't been in the casket long enough. So I don't know if that would have been Robin Williams's humor, but I think it would have been. But yes, I get that. I, I, I have had that a lot in my life. No, no, it could... I think, you know, a, jo a joke is a joke. Like, you know, you can, you know, freedom of speech. You can, you could say that. Mm -hmm. uh, he could probably, he could probably see 
see that aspect of it. But, you know, um, there's a funny story I was thinking of because um, I wanted to bring up Robin Williams, but I thought, what could I do to make this fresh? You know, there was actually, it was in 2015, uh, there was a song, uh, it's an Iron Maiden song, actually, uh, that they'd written about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's called Tears of a Clown. It's from their oh, album. Yeah. yeah, from their album, uh, The Book of Souls, second to last one that they that they did. Who motivates the motivator? But I thought, oh, is that what the song is about? No, that's really, you know, it just goes to show the impact that he had, you know. Yeah. Mm. And, and also, I think it it shows the impact that stuff had on him. Because every time we saw him as the public, because mm -hmm. I didn't know him personally, no. I know some people that I acted with, like Cindy Williams, who knew him and was a friend of his, uh, that he was always like dynamic and everything. But there was something lurking in the background, which is so sad. And I think that happens with uh, probably many people that are like that. You know, he, he, he's got his front had his front persona but the darkness never came forward mm, mm. well i think he um yeah it's th this is one of the sad things about you know celebrity and that there is the person that you see but it's not the person necessarily that's behind that that mm. mask because i think um he was he was un you know not very well with his with his mental health and i think he was uh there might have even been some sort of uh, early onset dementia or Alzheimer's even uh, with uh, yes. with Robin. I think that was something he was being diagnosed with right right before his passing. And I just thought, no, it's just really sad. Yeah. I, I, I have heard that. And I think that was something that he didn't want to try to figure out how to fix. Mm. But then when you think of dementia, nah, I, I don't want to get phil too philosophical. <laughs> well. Like, like, okay, so sometimes when I go to bed at night, and I'm sure it's the same with you, is you go like, ah, okay, now, what do I have to do tomorrow morning? No, I can't remember. And then you think, and then it comes to you, and you go like, oh, no, I, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I've got a 11 a.m. meeting with William in, in, in the UK. But the night before, you go like, and I don't know if that's dementia or if that is just like way too much wine before you go to bed. Oh boy. Well, yeah, I'll be honest because I'm in the middle of, of script writing for one of my YouTube projects and I'm moving things around like I have a series of notes that I'm decimating. I've categorized them. It's like, okay, I need to move this here and that there like a chess mm -hmm. game. And uh, I thought, because I kept copying and pasting things and I would take something out and I'd immediately forget what it was. Like, what did I just what did I just copy and what where is this going and I'd paste it I'm like okay that's what it is but then I'd forget it again and then I'd do it over and over I'm like oh more <laughs> me again I should say here that if I'm in that position where I'm editing videos or writing scripts or the like if I'm forgetting what I'm doing every other minute I'm probably just burnt out tired by that point and I need a break I'm just like whatever <laughs> So I, I, I think I think that is a normal thing for us human beings. Yeah. Because I know I know people have said to me in the past, oh my God, Michael, Jesus, what are you uh, are you just getting really old? You forgot where your keys are. <laughs> and I would say to them, when I went to primary school in England mm -hmm. in Leon C, and I was four, mm -hmm. I forgot where my mittens were. I forgot where my hat was. <laughs> so I think it's something that's just been with me and all of us our whole lives so we shouldn't worry too much about it that's what i think sure no no worries yeah but it's cool so uh michael let's see if i can read read the uh german vhs tape oh here. goodness yeah i i'm gonna try this and then we'll crack on with uh with the other two little bits there okay yeah so <clears throat> super hold ace us dem Vertuilen uh, computer spiel. I do love that. Uh, landet und ganz reilen Alltag von Schweiler Mark. Day 13. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jareg Mark Hollander. 
Aced Gerard von England. <laughs> I'm picking up that one. Yeah, it, it is weird what translates and what doesn't. Usually in German, um, like television is another one. Like if it's an actor or if it's, you know, someone where you can pick out names, be like, I know what that is. And then it's just another language. So uh, England, Nacht, America, Gezogen und hat sein Problem. Sich und der Nuren Klaas uh, Eisen Wochen als er gerasten Schein Leibsing Leiblings Computerspiel Ace Lightning. <laughs> Spelt für das Haus von einem Blitz getroffen und de Hauptfigur Hauptfigur Ace Uf what zum Leben. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that is very good. Oh, uh, danke. <laughs> Peter. Yeah, I spent a few, uh, I've been on holiday a few times to Denmark and that, that word, uh, you know, danke is like, you know, go, comes from that. So I, I remember yeah. that. I remember that. And uh, yeah, German, German's another one. It's one of the easier ones to learn, but uh, even then. Well, I, I think it's an easier one to learn because it is uh, very close. The English and the German language are very close. Mm -hmm. Whereas you've got the French, uh, Spanish, Italian, which are romantic languages, but Germany and England had the same sort of root which is why, you know, if, if you watch a German, I, I always joke with myself, uh, if I watch a German movie that is, and I love German movies with subtitles, I always convince myself, probably incorrectly, that halfway through, I don't need to look at the subtitles anymore. I understand exactly what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you feel like you do. Yeah, speaking's always easier than than reading, especially when you learn a language when when you're a child. So like, mm -hmm. it's probably honestly you could probably if you know what's being said already, well, it's easy. But unless you don't, you know, um, it it kind of it kind of depends. Yeah. But um, so uh, Michael, yes, uh, could I ask you? Um, uh, could I ask you about Keith Knight, who was the voice of Pigface? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, do you remember working with Keith Knight? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, yeah. He was a great guy. Oh, fantastic! Because I think he was he was on Shining Time Station, which Rick St uh, Sigelko had produced uh, previously. He was in one episode of that. What color is this wonderful silk hanky? Red. Red. And what color is the sky? Blue. Blue. Right, you are. Don't think about your audience. Concentrate on your magic. It's your gift. And I thought, what else has Keith done? Because uh, he's he's not with us any longer, unfortunately. Well, not, uh, I think he passed away in 2007, I read. I don't recall when. No. But, yeah, but, yeah. Because I, I did an episode of Shining Time Station as well. Yeah. Would you like to try a kielbasa sausage? It goes great with our freshly baked buns. Where dreams can come true. So, yeah, and, and yeah, Keith and I, we went out for a couple of beer together and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. but yeah he, he was a good guy was he able to do because pig face had that squeal that he would often that he would often do like did that come from him or how how was that produced you know i believe it came from him oh no more jokes <laughs> this will be your last course i may sit corrected about that but i'm pretty certain it came from him mm -hmm. I do love impressions, but yeah, I don't. I don't know how to how to re how to produce that. So reproducing it, I. But uh, no, that um, no, that's really wonderful. Wonderful to hear that. No, he was a great man. Mm. Mm. Well, that's the thing. Like, it, like, like I said to you earlier, I think that I don't remember one person that I worked with on Ace Lightning. It was difficult. Not the director, the sound recorders, the actors, the anybody else. They, everybody was just really amicable. Yeah. And I think that's what made it such a great environment to work in. Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you, you always felt safe. 
and you always felt like if you screw up, okay, well, we'll just do that bit again. Okay. And then you try not to screw up. And but th that's th that's the advantage of voice acting as opposed to acting on stage mm -hmm. is that if you screw up on stage, you've got to get out of it somehow because it's live. Yeah. Voice recording, if you screw up, you go like, oh, well, anyway, so blah, blah, blah. Ah, shit. Oh. And then you get it right the next time. Mm -hmm. It's so easy as a voice actor. It's so easy. You've got your script in front of you. You don't have to learn the lines. It's it's just so easy. And when I hear people say like, oh, my God, it must be really hard. It's like, no, no, <laughs> driving a bus is really hard. Being a voice actor is really, really easy. <laughs> That's, you know, you know, nice. I learned um, uh, it's another Canadian uh, talent, um, uh, Maurice LaMarche, you know, who, of course, mm -hmm. has done uh, his his thing was stand up comedy and as an impressionist and kind of made the the adjacent step into children's animation, which I think he always loved from like the Looney Tunes onward and hearing interviews with Maurice that um, you don't need to learn the lines. It's right. It's right there. I believe there is a technique to silently turning the script page while oh. doing it, but there absolutely is. It's funny you say this because I haven't thought about this in ages. It's uh, here. Yeah. This is a Kleenex, not a page. So what happens is you're reading your lines, blah blah blah. Oh right, my lord. Well, what should we do now? Should we go and? kill him and then it's up to the editors to cut that time out mm -hmm. because you can't turn it quietly and when the editors get it so long as you pause between the end and the beginning of the next line the editors can put it together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they can get rid of the because it's impossible absolutely impossible to hide a page turn. i was gonna say i thought how could you do it you know you couldn't. These days, you might be able to do it if everything was on screen. So it was like, a, you know, you're looking and reading your lines on screen. But eh. no, you, you cannot hide a page turn. Mm. But you've got to remember to pause at the end of the line and then start the next line. So the editor can put the words together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, where it's said in such a way where it's like, we know there's a cut here. There's a there's, We're going to put an edit there, so we'll perform with this in mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's performance and it's acting and it's all in the voice and yeah. It's a testament, you know, to, um, you know, talking of the cast being so amicable on Ace Lightning, which is a wonderful story to, you know, to tell because, you know, it's one of my favourite shows and it's nice just to hear, you know, how positive it all was. But, you know, um, it's another talent who passed away uh, somewhat recently, unfortunately, uh, Howard Jerome, who's the voice... Oh. I know. I know. I know. Uh, uh, well, as with uh, Juan and Tamara, whom I acted on stage with, mm -hmm. pardon me, I acted with Howard for about, before we did Ace Lightning, for about six months in a show called uh, Run for Your Wife oh. in Toronto. And uh, Howard is, I, I hate to say the word was, mm -hmm. uh, an amazing man. And he told me one of the funniest stories that I've heard in my life, because he used to be a wrestler. You, I was going to say, did you know that's what he did? Yeah. Yeah. And he told me that in his wrestling career, you know, he was such a gentleman. I mean, we all know wrestling's fake. Not fake. It's entertainment. I shouldn't say fake. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was the bad guy. And he always used to tell me that, I forget the name of his character. My wrestling name, so don't mess with me, was uh, Eric Von Hess. But anyway, he was a he was a Nazi. His his wrestler name? Yeah, he was a Nazi. And how was Jerome's a Jew? Yeah. My Hebrew name would be Chaim Yosef. Are you tired of being bullied? Yeah, I'm tired of being bullied. Learn the ancient art of jujitsu. I said, well, I'm a Jew. Maybe I can learn this jitsu thing. So anyway, for his wrestling, he was a Nazi. <laughs> So he would be the Nazi, blah, blah, blah. And people never put it together that this was a Jewish man 
playing a Nazi, mm -hmm. playing a wrestler. Nobody ever got it. And it was just like, this is entertainment. I wonder if, is there footage? Because I've only heard in- Oh, in there has to be footage. footage. I, I think there would, it would need some research. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look a little bit, but I know there's bound to be something. There has to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I remember seeing him, oh, I'm going to say a week before his passing. Oh. And uh, it was so sad. But it- not sad for his passing mm -hmm. because he was ready for it but it's sad f when, when we all when the world loses somebody we all mourn that they are not here anymore and it's more about us than about them it's not like oh my god howard what's gonna happen no 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 it's what's gonna happen to me how am I going to get along without Howard? How am I going to get along without, you know, my mother, my father, my whatever? Mm -hmm. it, it's very narcissistic. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, he, he was so good. Mm -hmm. He was so much, again, so much fun to work with. Because mm -hmm. he's a big guy with this big voice. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Like you just talk to him normally and he'd be like, oh, Michael, okay. Well, what are we going to do? It's like, mm. why do you talk like that? Uh, it's the only way I know how to talk. Mm -hmm. I loved him so much. Yeah, no, he was such a great, uh, you know, great character, not just as an actor, but as a character, you know, like a guy. Because I've seen, I've, there's an interview on, on YouTube, actually, where I'd heard that he was, was a wrestler, and I thought... Uh, you know, it was amazing just hearing him speak. And I thought, oh, he, um, you know, it's interesting because Anvil, his character was this kind of top heavy, muscular yeah. character. And uh, he wasn't very intelligent, but that was, that, that was part of the comedy. If lightning strikes, Anvil break him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, it's the bronze over brains thing. And yes. uh, like um, I could hear sort of his anvil voice just in him talking in plain interviews. I have been given the body of this middle-aged, overweight, North American type male in order to bring you the glad tidings. Anything is possible. It goes to show that there are some actors that don't necessarily do impressions, that a lot of their voice, a lot of their character is just them. And it was heartwarming just to hear more of that voice, more of him. Who would you like to be? It's really up to you, you see. It's really up to you and me the miracle we're here at all me this you such a great such a great talent yeah you, you you're absolutely right and uh i know and 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 because i would tease him uh about the fact that like in ace lightning like yeah sure he was a tough guy but he, he was a moron he was a moron yeah how nice of you to drop in did i break him uh, shut up and when we would go out, I would just, I, I, I remember often saying to him, so uh, are you really that stupid? Knowing that that wasn't true, but just to bug him, right? Push him. And he, and I, I believe often his reply was, you know, Michael, yeah, I, I am that stupid. <laughs> because he had such a great sense of humor and he was the kindest man and he loved animals. He donated so much money to uh, animal shelters and everything. And uh, he was such, is such an amazing human being. And we're lucky to have had him on this planet. And we need more Howard Jerome's on this planet. Mm -hmm. The sweetest <laughs> man. Yeah. No, I remember um I remember reading about him on IMDB, which I've done with, you know, a few different cast members from Ace Lightning, seeing what else he had done. And quite a few of the cast members uh, were in Goosebumps, actually, the uh yeah. you know, with you know, Canadian shot show. And he appears uh, I might I'll see if I can find a clip of it for you where he shows up in someone's nightmare, it's all like backlit and scary, and he plays this judge with a big gavel. And I, I, I didn't know it was him because it was a few years before Ace and you know reading that and um because I'd seen the episode not knowing it was him like was that him oh that was funny I remember that you are here by pound guilty 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 
And someone else who was acting there in person is David Hugh Band, who uh, oh, was yes. in an episode of, of Goosebumps as well. And because I know him as the sports coach from Ace Lightning, I was watching the TV. I'm like, it's coach. It's the coach from Ace Lightning. What a crazy world, huh? <laughs> Congratulations on your purchase of the Verona XG20 Universal Remote Control. That, that's a good testament to his talent because coach was, you know, pretty average, average person. Yeah. Took sports seriously. Well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, a good coach never reveals his secrets. More focus. And remember, winners win. Again, winners win, losers lose. But then seeing him be this creepy salesman type, yeah. having this universal remote control on the television, I'm like, oh, this is interesting because it, you know, different range being expressed for the actor, you know? We hope you enjoy your new Verona XG20 universal remote control. It will bring you a lifetime of enjoyment. Yeah, exactly. But that that's why that's why we're actors, right? Because we can do different things. Oh, and yeah. Again, he's a great, I think he just had a birthday. He, he's a great guy. And uh, I've worked with him on several shows. And uh, he's just fun to work with because he takes on his character. And in his character, of course, he does what the character should do. But, you know, when you stop filming or recording or whatever you're doing, he's just David. He's just like, oh, okay, that's over. Yeah. That's great. Okay, what do you want to do now? <laughs> Yeah, there's some actors where you you kind of assume that they are what what they play, but you know, yeah. but really there are some actors like you just said. Sorry to interrupt you, by the oh, way, no. but this is there are some actors that, and I've worked with them that live there. I guess they're called method actors, where they say, "Okay, what do you want me to be? I have to be this all day," and when you go out to lunch. When you have a break, they're still that character. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is insanity. That, to me, is not acting. Because acting is, I say to you, William, uh, what Shakespearean character would you like me to be right now? And say you say... Uh, Ophelia? I don't know Ophelia's lines. Okay. Iago. But I do know Hamlet's. Hamlet's Hamlet, okay. Or... Uh, or Richard II. But as an actor, you just become that character. That's your job as an actor. Mm -hmm. Like In Hamlet, the classic one, of course, is to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether well, it's humbler to... And then you say lying to the stage manager because you've got your line. But the, the thing is, is that as an actor, you act. You don't have to be the person. I hate it when I read or hear about people that have to embody their character. Mm -hmm. Because that's not you. That is some something that somebody else has written that's brilliant. And you're acting it. Mm -hmm. That's why you're an actor for fuck's sake you bring some yeah yeah you, you bring some of yourself into your character but you don't have to do this wear this hat full time you, you can turn it on and off i think you'd be better turning it on and off it's like uh when you mentioned method acting there's there's three people uh very very different uh people who i think of one is james dean another is the late great heath ledger and yeah also um brad Dourif, who was in lord of the rings his accent that he did because brad Brad's American, but he's supposed to be doing an English accent. A lot of the characters, you know, did. Like Elijah Wood, obviously, is American. And uh, he would go to lunch and turn it off, turn the accent off. And people thought he was pretending because they were used to his English <laughs> voice. And he was talking American like, why are you talking like that? Like, that's how I talk. I was pretending. I was, I was method. I was, that's what that was. I think Bernard said, it sounded like I had some really terrible, phony American accent. Thought I was sending it up. But I think, Michael, out of, um, out of the Ace Lightning cast, I think Howard Jerome was, was the only American. I think the rest are, I think the rest were all uh, Canadian. Yes. American uh, born. Yes, that's true. But uh, so I've got three three more names that I can just rattle okay. off quickly yet. No worries. So uh, Richard Binsley, uh, the voice of Google. Oh, yes. Now, again, Richard and I did a farce play together. And uh, 
again, all I can say about Richard is that he was a great guy. He was positive. I, I have nothing bad to say about him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, he was uh, sorry to to break your heart, but as a child, I think Googler was my favorite character in the in the entire show, just because of his. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know uh, that that was somebody I liked to play in the playground as, just hunch forward, just be this, you know, court jester with the hedgehog shell. <laughs> <laughs> Googleness, gracious me! It's the Googler, yes, sir. <laughs> Googleness, gracious me! It's the Googler, yes, sir. <laughs> and Lord Fear's just like, say what? To? Say what? To? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. Something um, with Googler's puppets were voiced by Matt Fickner. Uh, Matt, you know, did voiceover in the first season, but then um, the puppets had no lines, so that role was cut, basically. I was going to say reduced, but it got cut. So did you get to interact much with, with Matt uh, doing voices or not too much? No, I did not get to interact much with Matt at all. The primary people that I interacted with were the other characters uh, not the puppets, but the other characters in the show, like Richard, Richard's characters, Juan's, Tamara's, mm -hmm. David's, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So you know, I, I, I didn't interact. I, I think, and I don't know this, but I think that they recorded the puppets separately. Possibly. Because I don't remember them ever being in the uh, ensemble. I don't remember them at all. This is the thing, yeah, this is the thing where um, if you have a, you know, a big cast of actors, uh, sometimes you know one another because you were in the same show, but you don't have scenes together. So it's not like, mm. you know, the work environment, it's like a different story, yeah. And, yeah, that that's that's completely true about actors. Mm -hmm. It's like you can do a whole movie and you could be the lead in the movie and you only bump into some of the actors for one minute at a time and you go like, I didn't know you were in this movie. <laughs> and that that's a terrible thing about movie land, but no. <laughs> but it's it's completely it's completely fair. You know, I guess as a fan, it's fascinating to learn, you know, a bit more about, you know, what it was like because it's, you know, my favorite thing. But also, you know, as as an adult now, knowing how these things work, it's sort of like this was like a job that that was done. And um, you know, this this is the way it was. And I'm sure there are some actors that are like, I, I'd love to tell you about what it was like, but I, I don't have, you know, that much to say. It dep it, dep it really does depend on the story, you know. It does, but it also depends on the integrity and the honesty of the actor or the person that's gonna respond to you. Like like if you said to me, uh have I ever had a difficult situation in any movie or stage thing that I've ever done? I would say to you, yeah, I've had like two or three. Uh, they're not the end of the world, but they were pretty bad. Oh. I, I, would, I would tell you about them, like a relationship I had with an actress that uh, for a year and a half that turned out to be just awful but that's we all have situations like that mm -hmm. but i i think it's just about being honest and I, I think actors that close themselves behind the curtain of the stage of real life is a problem yeah. because we've all got the same shit mm -hmm. i mean you in scotland have the same shit that i have here in toronto mm -hmm. sometimes the weather's great sometimes it's crap mm -hmm. sometimes we wake up and we go like oh god this is i feel great sometimes we wake up and go oh, i'm going back to bed for an hour everybody has the same shit i think yeah but it's cool you know it's it's just kind of such as life i'd probably be not worried but it's it's actually it's a healthy thing like it's like oh i don't have to like everything the other person does and they don't oh, to me, right. you know but it's that thing of interactions there's two more two more names i've got but one mm -hmm. of them uh adrian truss i think i'm saying that right yes you are <laughs> yeah yeah because i had a feeling it's not truce or else he might have to go oh, trust. waving a little it, white flag it's adrian time. truss yeah. <laughs> it's Adrian Travis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian, yeah, who's done a lot of voice work, uh, much like yourself in mm. the shows that, you know, that I've now, grown up I, with. I, I don't know Adrian well, but I do know him. 
Mm-hmm. And we have done several different things together. Yeah. In in Voice Land. And a- a- Adrian Truss is, again, he's a great guy. He's just smiley and friendly and just nice. He's just a nice guy to hang around. I think I did hear him interviewed. It might have been audio only talking about some of his more recent projects. But going back to Ace Lightning with Adrian, it might be um, going back to Matt Fickner, you know, talking about what it was like working with them. Uh, It depends, I suppose, on how it was recorded, because Dirty Rat, um, Adrian's character, did interact with the puppets, with Matt Fickner's Mm. two characters. So I want the amulet. You want it? You got it. We'll get one. Sorry, I feel like I'm pounding you with all this stuff. Oh, oh, cheers. But um, because Michael, uh, because Cal Dodd uh, had like a ultimately small but very memorable role to me in Ace Lightning, did you get to interact much with him, like in the recording studio and out of it, or not too much? Uh, sadly, I did not get to interact with him in either situation, in or out of the recording studio. Uh, I, I can't remember a time that he was part of the ensemble with me and the others. So I, I, I didn't really get to interact with him. That's the thing about voice acting is that you, like, like the Juan, the Tamaras, the Davids, the blah, 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 they're current and continuing characters so you interact with them a lot but ancillary characters it tends to be rare Mm -hmm. no it makes enough sense just because of like the principal cast and then like not so much guest stars but you know people that they're in Mm -hmm. the show but they're not in it the entire time like deb odell or deborah odell the voice of sparks and then um you know robert tinkler is another one you know just the just things like that yeah um I'll, i'll say i'll say quick um it was a f- number of years ago, actually, I'd written some uh, fan fiction, they, they call it, about, about Ace Lightning, which was, uh, it was supposed to be a follow up to the second season. And uh, I'd learned that uh, at the time that Keith Knight had passed away. A number of this was a few I, I discovered this a few years yeah. after the fact and I, I was a teenager and I just thought oh that's really unfortunate because I really loved his character as I do mm-hmm. so many in the show and so I dedicated the fan fiction that I printed I said in loving memory of Keith Knight oh so that's I, so sweet yeah I might I might well do that in in the video when we talk about a few of the cast members actually I could say in loving memory of Keith Knight, Howard Jerome, yeah, R. R. D. Reed is another is another one. Mr. Chesbro and uh, I think Ned Vokovic, I think is how you you say it. Yeah. Who, who played Simon Mark's dad, who was also in Shakespeare quite a lot, I think. That would be very sweet. That would be very nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd really, I'd really love to, just because while some of them, some of these talents, they're they're not like not everyone can be a, a big huge star, but some people can still re- be really important to, you know, to us, the viewer, the fans, and, you yeah, know, like yourself. I agree. It's been really amazing speaking to you, Michael. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for inviting me. It's fun. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing the, the episode. Yeah, I'm in the midst of making that plus another, so I'll, uh, different projects. So we'll try and just get this get this to work. I'll um, I'll f- I'll focus on like the first thirteen episodes, I think, and then maybe do then do the next, and then try and do more. But no, I'll throw you the link to that once we're once we're done. Yeah. Uh, it was a dream come true to be able to talk to you. Well, thank you so much for the interview. This is wonderful to talk. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Ba ba da 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 there's a hero, there's a hero in our soul. There's a hero, there's a hero in our song. Put a hero in our song. 
You have to do what's right. You have to do what's good. It's hard to stand and fight when you're misunderstood. We don't have to play this game all alone, cuz there's a hero. There's a hero in us song. There's a hero. There's a hero in us. The hero in us. The world can be such a lonely place. Ching 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 ching. When there's not much hope for you at home. You at home. If I'm in trouble, I can count on Ace. I don't have to play this game alone. There's a hero. There's a hero in us song. There's a hero. There's a hero in us song. There's a hero. There's a hero in us. There's a hero. There's a hero. There's a hero in us. With a hero in us.